What's up and welcome to the DualSense Podcast for episode number 155. I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Jason. I'm joined by your other co-host, whose uh, name shall not be said this evening, although it is a, it is a good one. His real name that I'll call him is Travis. Travis, how are you? What's Gucci, as the children say? Nothing's Gucci. I hate this country. <laughs> Surely not. You had a nice pancake breakfast at the Cracker Barrel, the Honky Bucket. Yeah. Everybody's fucking stupid, and that's the problem. <laughs> there are a lot of dummies out there. No doubt about so that. Our waitress was stupid. I left her like a 3% tip. Like, well, that's brutal. There was, is she bad? There's like, no, she's just stupid. Like, fucking listen. How hard is it to listen? And then like, <laughs> she never brought extra syrup. Oh, and yeah. Like, well. I hate when they come over. You're in the middle of your meal. They're like, do you want another drink? What do you fucking think? <laughs> this one's almost empty. What do you think? What do you, this one's almost empty. I don't want to drink another drop while, while I finish my meal. Though. You ask me that question when you bring the check. Don't ask me that in the middle of this. Well, I don't understand. It's just and then, you know, everybody there's 95. I could hear heart monitors beeping, you know, while they're stuffing their face with gravy. Mm. It's just a really cool, really cool experience. I enjoyed all of it. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like you did. I can tell. I, uh, on a totally different level, I ordered, I told you, I ordered, a, well, I've ordered a couple of packages that arrived today that I'm excited about. First of all, I ordered a package yesterday from Amazon. I ordered an Xbox headset that was on sale for 50% off. And I wonder why. Yeah, I'm a, it's an Xbox podcast now. I'm a big Xbox guy. No, I wonder why it's 50% off. Oh, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, really cool uh, console, selling a lot of consoles over there. Anyway, I ordered it. And I just did the quick pay or uh, whatever, quick checkout or what, what was the thing you can do on the Amazon app where you just, I'm such a boomer right now. You just swipe and it just orders it instantly, whatever that's called. I did that thing. What I didn't realize when I did that is that it said it was going to arrive by Prime, between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. today. Mm -hmm. Ordered it yesterday morning. Arrived four, by, between 4 and 8 a.m. today. Okay. Did you, did you wait up for it? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't sleep until I got that <laughs> Xbox headset. So anyway, woke up this morning, 6 o'clock. Dogs needed to go to the bathroom. Go outside a few minutes after six. Package is already sitting on my on my front porch. I could not believe it. I thought it was a I thought it was a glitch. Like I I, I thought surely it's not going to be here at that time of day. What I was really nervous about is if they rang my fucking doorbell. God damn it! <laughs> I already said it. Did you say it? Did you ruin the f word thing already? Anyway, they rang my fucking doorbell. <laughs> is what I was worried about. They did not do it. Thankfully, they've been trained well. I don't like your Cracker Barrel waitress, but mm -hmm. it was there. She only had one star. Oh, well, that, 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 there you go. You need a four star general when you go to Cracker Barrel. I know. I don't need a fucking walk on. <laughs> you don't need a fucking ensign on there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. So it was there by 6 a.m. Very impressed. Very impressed. Gotta say, but like I told you, this is why everything costs so damn much is because they delivered my package that I did not need by 6 a.m. today. By 6 a.m. today. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just mm -hmm. hey, give me the option. Like, I don't know what I, it, it's it's a catch-22, you know, because some people will do the right thing. Like, you know what? I don't need my Xbox headset until Wednesday. Why don't you relax? And I, I would I would do that on some things. Some things I do probably need by 6 a.m. on Friday. And mm -hmm. then here we go. We have to pay, you know, just out of the ass for everything. Everything's, you know, 70 eggs are, cost 70% more and all this weird shit. It's just, anyway. The other thing that came was all the way from across the pond from your boys over there. In the UK, I ordered a Everton sweatshirt from the Everton Direct uh, fan shop or whatever. Uh, it was also on sale, clearance. Wonder why. So I uh, <laughs> can have mm -hmm. an Everton sweatshirt while I sit through yet another relegation battle in the English Premier League this season. So a couple of things arrived today that I'm, I'm excited about. Anyway, I guess, uh, what, what, are we, what is this supposed to be about? PlayStation, I guess. So let's, uh, yeah, talk about some PlayStation. Anyway. Travis, you and I get together each and every week to discuss all of the week's news, rumors, new game releases, and much more as it pertains to PlayStation. We post new episodes every Monday on all of the usual podcast feeds, as well as YouTube, where we share gameplay videos as well. As a matter of fact, I just finished uploading some gameplay of Helldivers from uh, PS5. Well, I guess PS4 technically, but played it on my PS5. So I got about 18 minutes of Helldivers, one gameplay. If uh, you're interested, 
And uh, you can also find us on social media, of course. We would love to hear from you and talk PlayStation. Our primary feed is Twitter. We go by at the DualSense Pod. We're also on Instagram and Facebook and uh, threads now by default, which is Instagram's version of Twitter. So Zuckerberg has launched a Elon Musk competitor called Threads. It's uh, fine, as you would say, at this point. We also have a website. It's called the DualSense Podcast dot wordpress.com you can get the shows there each week as well show notes our bios and our photographs look at this photograph and uh yeah anyway find us wherever you please hit us up chat playstation listen to us and without any further ado or nonsense here let's jump into the week of news starting with number one playstation's mobile division has lost yet another top executive this week after just losing its chief executive in the last couple of weeks. Now, Mikhail Katkoff, who was managing director of the recently acquired Savage Game Studios, has departed the company. Katkoff confirmed his departure on LinkedIn, writing, quote, I'd like to believe I've done my fair part in taking the company from zero to one. Now I'm eager to watch from the side as Najim and Mike take it from one to 100. In the same breath, I wish nothing but the best to Olivier Cordemanche and Chris Davis, the new co-leads of PlayStation Mobile, who are leading PlayStation's charge onto mobile. Can't wait to play all the amazing games from all the fantastic developers, end quote. The waters certainly seem rough for PlayStation's push into mobile at the moment, which does not bode well for Sony Interactive Entertainment President Jim Ryan's forecast that half of PlayStation's annual game sales will be on, or I'm sorry, game releases will be on the PC and mobile by 2025. So what do you think about some uh, very high level, not only the uh, the person that Nicola Sebastiani guy who was the head of the whole thing, but now the studio that PlayStation acquired uh, either earlier this year or, or last year, I can't remember, the guy who manages that studio is gone now. What do you make of this? I mean, not great news, but um, makes you wonder what's in the water there. I thought Cat Cop was the guy who tried to overthrow Putin a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tur- turns out he's not. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I thought Jim Ryan's statement about half of PlayStation's game releases being on PC and mobile in two years was a little extreme. It mm-hmm. felt a little um, marketing-ish. Like, it didn't feel realistic to me at all. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, this obviously doesn't help that. So it seems even less likely to me now. But, you know, I don't think his... You know his LinkedIn quote thing is a bunch of bullshit that doesn't mean anything anyway. He he left right. because he wanted to. He is he's not gonna doesn't give a fuck what Najim and Mike do. He's not worried about Chris Davis. He's doing his own thing or the French guy whose name I can't say. Um, yeah. he went to go do something he thought was better. You know, people leave for opportunities. I'm sure he has an opportunity, whether that's his own thing or you know a better, a uh, better situation. Um, he's gonna go mm-hmm. find that. So we'll find out, I guess, in a few weeks what that is. Um, one way or the other. But, you know, not not a good look, not not a good start. Yeah, I, I've got to say it. I agree with you. It's, it definitely doesn't seem like everything is going well. Because in my mind, one of two things are happening. Either these guys are getting fired because they're not getting the job done or mm-hmm. they're leaving of their own volition before, mind you, they ever put a game out under this new mobile initiative and under this new mobile studio that PlayStation paid for and bought. Both of those things, I think, are atypical for what you see when you have, you know, a new initiative, a new division, if you will, and a new studio that you bring into the company. So I I definitely think something's up. I don't know if they, you know, couldn't carry the water. So Jim got rid of them, PlayStation got rid of them Mm -hmm. or what, or if these guys are like, wow, this is dog shit. I'm out of (laughs) here. You know, I, I don't know. Oh, the reason I would be hesitant, I mean, I hadn't thought about them getting fired, but the reason I would be hesitant would be, why would you buy them Mm. if they can't run it? Like, that Mm -hmm. seems silly to me. So maybe, I mean, it could be an option, but, you know, is there a precedent in in that industry where you don't just fire people, you kind of just let them, you give them like an ultimatum? Yeah, I think so. Because it kind of saves face. Yeah, I, I think that there is this thing in the game industry where you let people safe face right it's almost like the sports industry where okay i'm gonna let people retire you know what i'm saying i'm gonna let them come back for one game and retire a celtic or whatever the case is like i think it's a little bit of that kind of thing going on it's i don't, I don't know why but it is the other but the other thing i think that's a big red flag in all of this is that 
they being PlayStation put out two games on mobile that they didn't market at all, that they didn't put any money behind, no no PR, which is that Sackboy game and then a Wipeout game. They've done both of those things and they've just let them die on the vine and which are both odd because those are two big IP really for them. And I, so I, it's, it's very half hearted. It's, it's a half measure at the very least. And I don't really know. It makes it even more confusing as to what the hell they're doing with this and this and the whole mobile thing in, in general. The other thing about mobile and at least in my, from my perspective is that, you know, it's almost like lightning has to strike to have a successful mobile game. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the most successful mobile games are like pop culture phenomenons. They're fads for a few weeks or a few months. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they come mm-hmm. and go. That's what and I feel about live service. Yeah, that too. Absolutely. And maybe that's okay. I don't know, but it's, it's hard to imagine that they truly will come out with a winner. That's like, you know, Wordle or Words with Friends or some of these other ones that have been huge. Like, I don't know. It's just hard to imagine. You know what I'm saying? Temple Run, whatever the case is. But at the very surface level, things appear to not be going well for whatever is happening at this PlayStation Mobile initiative. Number two, PlayStation 5 exclusive open world action game at Rise of the Ronin suffered a substantial leak this week, Travis, courtesy of reliable leaker The Snitch, who shared a bunch of info and screenshots on his Discord. We learned first and foremost that the game is scheduled to release on PS5 in the first quarter of 2024, so between January and March. As far as how the game plays, it is said to be a mix of Assassin's Creed, Ghost of Tsushima, and Dark Souls with various difficulty options, a large map, skill trees and ability trees, and even romance options, of all things. The game is also said to have both quality and performance graphical modes. So I did take a peek at some of the screenshots. There's it's not really only the menu and the user interface, the map, things like that. But uh, does any of this mean anything to you? Uh, more the most interesting thing to me is the release window. I'm that that was what I was the most interested in. I don't really care about the leak part. I mean, yeah. At this point, stuff gets out. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious about what the romance option is. That's very strange, and I don't know. Yeah. Agreed. Those three games is interesting for what those three games have in common they also have not in common <laughs> right if that makes sense so oh yeah if they pull the stuff together that's in common i think it could be very very cool if they start tying in stuff that's like really far apart it's going to be real goofy and miss the mark so yeah um i would like to see some gameplay be leaked in tent anytime soon <laughs> but you know what's interesting is i play i play crime boss on quality not performance yeah i do too I just I think too. it's interesting. I don't know. I always, I always wonder why people choose what they choose. Mm-hmm. It depends I, on the game. Yeah, because sometimes performance just looks better on my TV for whatever reason. So um, yeah, but I don't think it's a huge ordeal. It's just um, you know I had completely forgotten about the game, so maybe it's a good thing yeah. it leaked a little bit. Like maybe they needed that. Yeah, I agree. I think that everything so far sounds good. It, the only thing that gives me pause is the inclusion of the words dark souls right because yeah. i don't want to play a hard game in that vein but it sounds like there will be difficulty options where you you can play the game you know balls hard if you want to balls to the wall hard if you want to and Not that also that. counts for a performance romance mode you can play balls hard there too <laughs> touche but uh, the rest of it sounds great. A mix of Ghost of Tsushima, Assassin's Creed. The Snitch did say that this it has a lot of side quests that are like Ubisoft style side quests. Um, so there's that. I think that the really interesting thing to me about this is that it's July. This game's coming out in six to eight months, and we haven't seen it, and we don't have the release date for it. Uh, the reason why I find that interesting is because I think that it gives some credence to the rumors that there's going to be a PlayStation showcase later this year. Um, I kind of have a, have a thought that it might be like a December thing because they, they used to do kind of that PlayStation experience thing in December. So I think it would be kind of cool to have a PlayStation showcase in the early December. And if this is like a February game, you know, announcing it 
uh, and giving it a release date then is totally cool in my opinion. I'm all for like these two, three month windows of that, you know, the shortened uh, windows of, of announcement and launch. Totally fine with that. So I'm pretty excited about this in theory. I want to see more of the game and then make a decision. But uh, I think this also goes back to what I said a few weeks ago that I don't think that Ghost of Tsushima comes out next year because I just don't think that you can release Rise of the Ronin and then Ghost of Tsushima, let's say six months later. Like, I don't think you can do that. I, I, I don't know. But I think we just have to brace ourselves for Tsushima being like a 2025 game. But uh, looking forward to this. We'll see. Number three, new rumors this week suggest that The Last of Us Part 3 has entered full development as a Twitter user named Viewer Anon, who is normally a reliable insider over on the film world, said that performance capture has been taking place for the game. He also claims that Ellie is a central piece in this third installment, but that she is joined by a large and new cast of supporting characters. That's all we have to go on now at the moment, after Naughty Dog announced that the multiplayer project has been delayed but that they were working also on a new single-player experience. So I know not a lot to go on, but the one thing that I did want to note is that I, I couldn't find it, but I, the, they, I found somewhere early on when this first came out of like a list of the characters that, that were being casted, like not names, but like, oh, it's a tall white guy from you know the suburbs or whatever, like that sort of thing. And it sounded like the, the amount of characters that they were casting for or doing performance capture for, it sounded to me almost like it was the multiplayer game. I just can't imagine that they would have that many. It was like seven or eight, nine new characters. And I just can't imagine that they would have like that many new characters in the what is presumably the third and final game in a trilogy. So anyway, before I, I wanted to kick it over you, I wanted to say that like I, I'm not sold that this is for part three and not the multiplayer game but what do you think uh well my theory on that would be maybe one of the issues they had with the multiplayer was having enough characters to fill out which what they were trying to do so right right pause that roll out the single player just completely scrap the multiplayer for a while because it seems like they're doing that anyway roll out the characters from the third part that way you can roll out the multiplayer after that Mm. you you finish the trilogy you introduce the new characters you cover a lot of bases that way so yeah yeah, it's. I mean, that'd be the only reason I could think of it. Yeah, I mean, what's to say that they're not doing performance capture for like the year two of content for the multiplayer mode? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, who knows? But if they started working on a new single player experience, you would assume it's it's part three, right? Yeah, I definitely so, would. I, I think that's fair. A fair assessment. Yeah, I mean, that would be that would be my real guess there. Um, it's interesting that a film leaker. Yeah, is, you know why um yeah i know uh maybe he's maybe, maybe he has contacts with people at you know hbo that are tied to the tv show so mm, yeah, those people be. probably have some insight into what's happening with the games that would make sense though mm, yeah that's a good point if they when they said they were moving on to a single player experience i just assumed it was it was part three because i didn't really know yeah. what else would fit the timing i mean they want to get this i think they want to get part three out as soon as they can so they can line up the the tv rights and whatnot yeah, yeah. I, I I still maintain that they're working on three games, that being Factions, Multiplayer, The Last of Us Part 3, and and a totally unannounced game. I think there's three, and I think that unannounced game very likely could be that fantasy game that's been alleged or rumored. So definitely think they're working on three things. Number four, NBA 2K24 was announced this week, Travis. Kobe Bryant will be the game's cover athlete, and it's launching September the 8th. Of course, with Kobe on the cover, there is also going to be a Mamba Moments mode, similar to the Jordan challenges from last year's game. Pre-orders are now available for the Standard Edition, which will set you back $69.99 on PS5 and $59.99 on PS4. The Black Mamba Edition will be $100 and come with a bunch of pre-order goodies and My Team Packs, etc. And the 25th Anniversary Edition is the most expensive version at $150, it includes everything from the first two editions and uh, even more goodies, as well as a 12-month subscription to NBA League Pass. The game will also feature cross-platform play across all game modes for current-gen versions of the game, which is the first time that the franchise has ever done that. Oddly, it will not include PC for cross-platform play, only PS5 and Xbox Series consoles. 
But perhaps most importantly, 2K is promising a new feature called Pro Play, which they say is a, quote, groundbreaking new technology that directly translates NBA footage into gameplay and delivers animations and movements via on-court NBA action for a generational leap in authenticity, end quote. Okay, what do you think? 150 is a good value if you want to watch the NBA all the time. Yeah, I would agree. That, that's an interesting, I like that one, actually. I like what they're doing there. Mm-hmm. The rest of the games, like, if you're not getting the 150, to me, it's not worth it. Just get the normal one. Like, these mm-hmm. $100 value games, it's always a bunch of cosmetic bullshit, and I don't, I don't yeah. very rarely does it really rope me in, you know what I mean? Right, for sure. Like, F1 this week, it randomly gave me a Max Verstappen helmet. Hmm. And, like, if I would have bought the Champions Edition, I would have gotten all this free Max Verstappen stuff. And then it randomly gave me a helmet the other day. I was like, <laughs> like why right. are you giving me this? Right. The Pro Play is interesting. I want to see what that actually looks like, if it actually does anything. Right. You know, my, my worry with animations is always, are we going to get stuck in animations where, hmm. you know, because, you know, like, 2K9, 2K8, even up to 16 and 17 you could get stuck in animation sometimes where like once mm-hmm. the computer started the animation you knew that they were going to make the shot or they're going to dunk you or mm-hmm. they're going to draw a foul because they stepped with their off foot like that stuff's really annoying it's cool if it can incorporate the animations how does it do that without motion capture is pretty interesting yeah it makes you wonder like if they can run some sort of algorithm that watches tape like that would be really cool yeah I feel like FIFA is, has done something like this in last year's game, too, but I could be wrong about that. Well, if that's true, I didn't notice anything, so it sounds like it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, it's like every 2K game. Like, what, like, show me what it looks like. It'll be free at some point, or it'll be half off in December, so. Yeah. Um, I could even get the, you know, I could probably get the 150 edition at some sort of discount at some point, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm just, it's its the same thing every year. Like, it's like every sport game. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand. I, I, I told the guys from Gaming Nexus, this is the game that I have like the biggest like love hate relationship with because I love to play it, but I hate to buy it. <laughs> it's like, I, but I inevitably do buy it at some point or another because it does have hooks in me in a way because I want, I, I like playing the My Team mode to an extent. You know, I like messing around on the on the GM or franchise, whatever it's called now, and you know, just having a team and and kind of doing the single player thing too, also to an extent. But to your point, it also, like every other sports game, as you said, just it doesn't change much year to year. And then when they do make big changes, people piss and moan about it, and then they roll back a lot of those changes, or they buff or nerf and you know, all this stuff. And it's just like, God, guys, why can't we just have a vision and stick to it, especially if it's good and you execute on it. And the other thing also on that line is, you know, all of these sports games now have these PR buzzwords, like for these features, like pro play, you know, Madden has field sense, like whatever. So it's just like a thing that they do. And I, I am like you, I'm skeptical of these, you know, PR, game play features or whatever and, and, and what they actually bring to the game. I'm like, yeah, I want to see it. I want to, you know, I want to feel it. I want to see if it actually does what they say. And if they can figure out a way to make the gameplay and the movement and the animation more authentic, more real to life, true to life, then yeah, I'm all for it. But that's, that just seems like a steep hill to climb. And I know that, you know, there's some separation between the generations on, on NBA and even Madden now too, with like, you know, the current gen versions get features that the old one doesn't. That's fine. That's great. I'm, I'm for that. But you, we have, we need a clean break, right? Like we got to get a clean break in there at some point to where we can just, and the thing is we're going to be halfway or more through the generation before that ever comes. And then we're going to start it all. We're going to get like two or three years of games that are like, wow, this is actually fucking like current gen sports. And then we're going to start it all over again in 2028 when ps6 comes out so like that's an aggravating thing that we have to deal with with these annualized sports games but we'll see we'll see what it looks like number five we also have a lot of news nuggets as well travis feel free to jump in here first nugget arrowhead game studios revealed new gameplay details and a new gameplay trailer for hell divers 2 this week and it sounds like a lot of what we love about the first game but just better and uh the gameplay trailer looks 
amazing. I can't fucking wait for this. Do you like the new angle better? Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of it. Big fan. You don't like it? I don't know what I think about it. Oh, okay. You don't think the gameplay looks good? No, I mean, I just, I like the top down, mm. slightly off kilter view that we had before. Like, to me, that was part of the, yeah. the fun of it. No, yeah, that, that's fair. I, I would, I, along those lines, I would also be equally excited if they were making this game look this good, but it was still an isometric top down game. I would be totally fine with that too. I think the reason why they haven't done that is because, you know, it, there's a sense of when you play a top down game, well, I say that, but look at Diablo, but there's almost like this weird sense, especially considering that the first game did it and it was kind of like, you know, an arcade or like, uh, like a, like an indie sort of game, whatever you want to call it, like not a triple A release, you know, not, not a major high quality triple A release. So I almost feel like they did it, changed it to the third person view to make it feel more premium, if that makes sense. So I don't yeah. know. We'll see how it plays out for them. Next nugget, MLB The Show 23's Rewards Program Season 3 is available now and brings a slew of new content to the game, including all-star break-related items. Rashid is coming to Street Fighter VI as a playable character on July 24th. Martial Arts Melee Battle Royale game at Naraka Blade Point is coming or is going free to play, excuse me, and coming to PS5 on July 13th with some special in-game content for PS Plus uh, subscribers. And uh, I'm going to check that out, see what it's about. Hypnotic platforming adventure game at Pixel Junk Eden 2 is coming to PS4 and PS5 later this year. Website Video Games Chronicle reported that Hitman developer IO Interactive has opened a new studio in Brighton, England to work in support of all three of its current projects, which are Project 007, Project Fantasy, and of course, Hitman. I feel like I should go work there for them. Oh, you definitely should. You, you, could, you can live in Brighton. You can go watch soccer all the time. Right. Be wonderful. You can have bangers and mash, you know, have a full English for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Full yeah. full English, yeah. Uh-huh. I always have a bunch of tea. And I just get to play Hitman 007 all day. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you uh what, what, what was that tea that you sent me in that picture? Have a have you a Jack D? It's a tea with milk and one sugar. Yeah, above the all the cogni sling. <laughs> yeah. Also Travis EA Sports FC 24 somewhat leaked this week. The game is scheduled for launch on September the 29th, we learned, and Manchester City star and D-bag Erling Holland is on the cover. Yeah, D-bag is his trait. <laughs> yes. I can't stand that guy. God, fuck, fuck him. He looks fuck just him. like you. He's very Nordic. Uh, true. Fair. He's my people, but still. Yeah, it's him. always your people that get you. <laughs> I know. Also, a new Final Fantasy 16 update will let players turn off motion blur and camera auto-centering as well as repairing some bugs. Capcom has said that they are, quote-unquote, considering how to approach making new Mega Man and Onimusha games in the future. What's Onimusha? I have no idea. It's, hmm. I, I want to say, say it's like... A type of boat? Uh, <laughs> no, I want to say it's like... Uh, oh my god, what is the name of that game? There's one Shanghai on Vita. Noon. No, there's one on Vita. It's mm. not Ten. It's not Tenchu. It's the other one. Doesn't matter. Nope. Yeah. Anyway, they're they're working on it. They say. Also, recently founded UK developer and Lighthouse Games has received a quote unquote game changing investment from Chinese communist company uh-huh. Tencent. I'll bet. <sighs> Fuck them. Publisher Gun Interactive from Kentucky. Shout out. We'll unlock all content and max out all players' stats ahead of Friday the 13th. The game being delisted from storefronts at the end of this year. It's pretty cool. One last nugget from US FTC hearings uh, last week is that Microsoft essentially confirmed what has long been rumored. Sony will launch a PS5 Slim later this year, and Microsoft also believes that it will be priced at $400 for what it's worth. They also said that they expect a PS5 Pro is on its way as well. So just some confirmation, reaffirmation of things that we already knew, basically. Prepare yourself. Also, Nacon has seemingly delayed racing game Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown to the first quarter of 2024 based on new financial documents. Later in the week, Nacon announced a uh, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown showcase event will be taking place this week with our first look at gameplay. THQ Nordic has said it is aware of crashing issues with AEW Fight Forever on PS4. 
they did not they did not commit to, to fixing them which was uh weird. yeah we get we know we got it <laughs> yeah we, we, yeah we've seen them seen them cool anyway yeah <laughs> kart racer disney speedstorm is launching out of early access as a free-to-play title on september the 28th the south african government has approved microsoft's acquisition of activision blizzard oh thank god yeah not that it fucking mattered yeah Oscar website a street can play now Website Kotaku has reported that Ubisoft is remaking Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and believe it or not, Skull and Bones Studio, Ubisoft Singapore, is one of the teams working on it. So, uh, let's uh, guys, why don't we just worry about getting the, the first game out the door first, or right. we worry about Black Flag? Let's just fuck off Black Flag for now and take care of Skull and Bones. But I don't know. That's great. I love this. Also, website Games Industry reported that Embracer Group has raised $182 million by issuing 80,000 new shares of stock. This, of course, comes on the heels of them planning to lay off staff, close studios, and sell off IP as they head for a financial crisis, it would seem. The South Korean Game Rating and Administration Committee, Travis, our friends, and the group that is constantly the source of unannounced games, has been charged with embezzlement. (laughs) <laughs> the regulatory body was found to have embezzled $46,000 from game rating fees to a Bitcoin mining operation, which is incredible. <laughs> what it's the not fuck? very much money. Like they must have got caught real quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like what the fuck are they doing? God. Website Pushquare reported that the price of Fall Guys in game currency is rising due to inflation. So you can call it Rise Guys now. Much like Epic's other and much fatter cash cow called Fortnite. So uh, it's it's amazing that they're raising the prices of currency in Fortnite because they, that game just makes money fucking hand over fist. But what are you going to do? Action RPG Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is nearing the end of development and Psy Game says that we can expect to hear more in August about the game. PlayStation Studio Fire Sprite has moved into a brand new office space in Liverpool, England, as they work to build what they say are showcase level PlayStation games. It's interesting, setting the bar high, I guess. Eerie Fishing Game Dredge received an update this week, which added a photo mode and a new passive mode that allows you to just fish instead of worrying <laughs> about all the other shit. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Good game, by the way. PlayStation Plus Premium subscribers can now enjoy a one-hour trial of survival horror game The Callisto Protocol on PS5. Have they thought of adding a uh, passive mode? (laughs) Yeah, where you don't have to get scared. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just walk through a space station. Yeah. PlayStation announced that they will attend Tokyo Game Show this year, which isn't a, a terrible shock, but they're only going to be showcasing indie games with potential games including Lost Soul Aside, Neva, Pacific Drive, Ultros, and perhaps even Little Devil Inside. Of course, that last one's a joke. That game's vaporware, but the rest sound cool. Ubisoft's real-time strategy game, The Settlers, New Allies, Shadow dropped onto PS4 this week after previously being delayed at the last minute, so they just said, fuck it, we're going to release it. Didn't even promote it, market it, whatever, so they must not be very confident in that game. PlayStation is reportedly seeking to secure more exclusive games and third-party partnerships from South Korean developers, according to MTN Korea, who reports that the PS5 maker is currently in negotiations with Pearl Abyss, the makers of Crimson Desert and Doke V, NCSoft, who make Blade Soul and are also rumored to be making a Horizon MMO. Come to us, come to us, come to us, who make Summoner's War and NeoWiz Games, who are making the upcoming Soulsborne game called Lies of P. So I almost put this in the main news. I think this is a very good move by Sony. I think, you know, I've said on the show before, there's a ton of cool-looking games coming out of South Korea, and obviously they have a lot of talent there. And I think just even if they could somehow, I don't know if the, why, I don't know that they need to go buy Pearl Abyss, but if they could lock down some of their games as exclusive, I think that's a, a big win for them because they have some really cool-looking shit specifically. Also, Capcom announced that Street Fighter 6 has crossed 2 million copies sold. Diablo 4's first season of post-launch content is called Malignant, and it will kick off on July 20th and features a new boss, new items, and more. Marvel announced that they will host a Marvel Spider-Man 2 panel at San Diego Comic-Con on July 20th, and it is said to feature a roundtable with staff from Insomniac Games and actors from the game itself. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, really I don't, cool. I'm just, there's so many fucking Spider-Men now, so it's, who cares? 
yeah, well, what I was going to say along those lines is they're just going to fucking just drive this game to the ground. They're going to overmarket it. They're going to show us too much of it. Like, they showed us 11 minutes of gameplay already. Like, I just, just don't do that. Well, you know they already I mean? have like, a cartoon out, and they're making another Spider-Man movie. It's, there's a lot of Spider-Man right now. Yeah, I mean, there is. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, and the guy who played Miles Morales said he's trying to get in shape so he can play a live-action Spider-Man. Wow. Should, okay. he, should Why would he just not try to, like, monopolize, get an animated series that, like... Right. I understand what you're saying, but, like, you mm-hmm. don't have to be on... Dude, you could make an animated series absolutely fucking kill it. But, like... Right. I don't know, it just seems very, like... That seems very ego egotistic to, like... I'm going to get in shape to be Spider-Man in person so I can play Miles Morales. First of all, in the cartoon voice, he's like 12. He'd be yeah. like 30. So it already doesn't work. <laughs> right. True. That is true. That's a good point. I'll ask him that at the round table. <laughs> Next nugget. Website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that a new job ad- advertisement, advertisement, or an associate console playtest analyst at Riot Games appears to confirm that a Valorant playtest of some sort is coming to PS5. So, hope you've... Uh, I guess if you've been looking forward to that, you have something to actually look forward to. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. Crash Team Rumble, Conan Exiles, Battlefield 2042, Diablo 4, AEW Fight Forever, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection on PC, Sniper Elite 5, Final Fantasy 16, The Division 2, The Crew 2, Amnesia the Bunker, No Man's Sky, and Wo Long Fallen Dynasty or Fallen Dynasty to some. Also, developer Sobo Studio appears to be working on a third Plague Tale game, according to a new job listing. It's quick. They've already moved on to the next one. Ark Survival Ascended, the remade version of Survival Evolved, has been delayed to October and has dropped its price from $60 to $45, while it will also be discounted to $40 at launch because they are actually removing content from the game at launch in order to get it out in October. so This is so weird. It is very odd. Co-op action RPG Atlas Fallen has gone gold ahead of its August 10th release on PS5. The Metal Gear Solid Master Collection games can be purchased a la carte for $20 a piece if you prefer. Konami has confirmed. NetherRealm confirmed that Rain and Smoke are both a part of the fighter roster in Mortal Kombat 1. Oh, I thought that was going to be like... <laughs> You know, environmental features. Right. <laughs> yeah, I vaguely remember rain and smoke. Smoke more so than rain. Anyway. Mm-hmm. AEW Fight Forever is getting a 30-player Battle Royale mode in a new update <laughs> called Stadium Stampede, which is kind sounds, of interesting. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought the same thing. Website Gamatsu reported that side-scrolling 2D Metroidvania game Alice Escaped will come to PS4 in the third quarter of this year. And there's an exclamation point there. I didn't just... Get excited for no reason. Team 17 will publish the next game from Licked Spear developer Lickthund for consoles and PC. And uh, you can Lickthund my balls <laughs> when that game comes out. Anyway. You can lick Spear my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Also, <laughs> Japanese indie game publisher Hyper Real has been founded and will focus on quote-unquote edgy and unique titles. Oh, I got an I got an edgy title for him. Oh boy! Oh yeah, yeah. Licked in my balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice crossover. Make that fucking game. Yeah. Also, visual novel. Oh boy, Suki 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 Hime, a piece of blue glass moon will come to the West in 2024. Neptunia Game Maker Revolution or R Evolution excuse me, is also coming west for PS4 and PS5 next year. 2v2 arena fighting game Jujutsu Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash was announced for PS4 and PS5, but no release date was given. Could be interesting. Perhaps. perhaps. Arena fighting is always interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Also, this one looks interesting as well, Travis. Four-player co-op top-down looter shooter Kill Squad is coming to PS4 and PS5 on July 20th in just mere weeks. Yeah. We don't have we don't have four friends. No, we don't. We have we have three total of us. Three and a half. We have three and a half. But we can still the do half it. rotates. Yeah, the half rotates. We can still do it. It's a thirty dollar game. Also, roguelike deck builder Oaken 
that would be a more fitting name if it was a roguelike dick builder. Anyway, it'll mm-hmm. leave early access and launch for PS4 and PS5 on July 20th as well. Saints Row got a new expansion this week called Doc Ketchum's Murder Circus, but also got a free Boot Hill content update, which came with a numerous quality of life fixes. And there's one more expansion and update coming in August. Marble platformer Marble It Up Ultra was announced for PS4 and PS5. It will launch August 17th. Dungeon crawling RPG Monu will launch in the West on September the 21st. River City Rival Showdown will release worldwide on PS4 on October 12th. Side-scrolling shoot-'em-up game Devil Engine Complete Edition will release for PS4 and PS5 on October the 12th as well. Action creature collecting game Adore will launch for PS4 and PS5 on August the 3rd. And finally, Travis Gamazzi reported that The Spirit and the Mouse will come to PS4 and PS5 on July 20th, I think after being previously available on Switch and PC. And that is all for the news this week. I'm going to turn it over to Travis now for this week's brand new games. On July 4th, greatest day in the history of the world. That's right. We have Burnhouse Lane, Cubic Light, Everloon, Gar Lickton, My Balls, Humani- Humanity, <laughs> Human Anatomy VR, uh huh, Math World VR. Synapse the True on the fifth. We have Echo Blade on the sixth. We have Gimmick Special Edition Glit Glit G Y L T <laughs> Guilt. Oh, Guilt. Sorry, <laughs> Glit. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, 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 you ever seen the gl- have you ever seen the Glitoris? No, I heard it's hard to find. <laughs> Glitoris Rex. Yeah, some girls like it when you lick ton the glit. Oh, god, anyway. Ne- Necrosmith, uh, Scarf. It's a new version of a Guitar Smith. It is it's for dead people. Die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Scarf is where you practice putting things to keep the glit warm. <laughs> On the seventh, we have <laughs> Aliens Attack, Death or Treat, uh, Feeble Light, Garlic Again, hmm, uh, Real Real Truck Driver S- Simulator USA. Why did that one hang you up out of all? <laughs> Other ones, uh, real crap, bird simulator. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. So I was like, I read real, tr- uh, real trick driver, uh huh. And then the USA just kept the recapping more words added to the end of it. Like, uh, anyway, uh, we have split and trails into reverie. Yeah, that's it. Uh, pretty not good week for releases, other than Synapse on PSVR 2 is supposedly very good. Very good indeed. And um, Guilt was a former Stadia exclusive, RIP, making its way to other consoles. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all for the new games this week. We will start to wrap the show up here. A rather breezy show, if you will, by discussing what we've been playing and anything that we're looking forward to. So what do you got? What's on your mind? Let's see. Uh, we played some Hell Divers with Jacob the other night. Um, I forgot to put that on. No, it's on there. Yeah. The same as always. Uh, good time. Um, mm-hmm. We had a really great experience with uh, the number one player on the leaderboard jumps into our game. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wanted to blow his head off because, you know, he's the number one player. I wouldn't. I want to do that. And then uh, you guys said no. And then uh-huh. about right before we were getting ready to sh- extract, it occurred to me, why would he join an easy board? Because we were like on an easy world. Very strange. You're rank number one. Why would you come to an easy world? Yeah. And yeah. then he. Yeah cryogenically froze us and got on the plane and we couldn't extract. Yep. Yep. So it's cool. I should have, I should have trusted your gut. I'm sorry. Yeah. My gut said to blow his fucking head off. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully he joins again. So I, so I can murder him. Yeah. What, what an honor by the way, to get just, you know, just shit on by the number one player in the world. <laughs> yeah. Really, really enjoyed it. Mm. Let's see here. Um, played some battlefield last night. I couldn't, I was trying to use the new sniper and it just wasn't working for me. Mm. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I couldn't hit anything, nor could I kill anything. So it was uh, just incredibly frustrating. But um, yeah, I still enjoyed, uh, I don't know, maybe it was just the gun because I switched to the assault rifles and did okay for a minute. And I was trying to use the Magnum because I really want to use the Magnum, but it, it's just too slow. Um, you get like one shot off and then they, whoever, you just get mowed down. So yeah, L- love that for me. See here, I'm almost done with my solo career f1 season season one um 
they got like three races left it's it gave me the um i guess the uh regulation changes so i had to go to those departments and um mm-hmm. basically protect the uh, upgrades i've made if you don't protect them you'll lose them and you have to okay. use your points to protect them so i went through and protected every major upgrade i had and hopefully i'll have enough points to protect everything because i spent a lot of time in the powertrain and in the chassis and then they both of course are what they changed the regulations on because <laughs> like yeah my durability was already really high i didn't need to touch it right but no they yeah. picked the two things that i had done a thousand <laughs> things on so of course we'll see if i run out or not i don't know it's gonna be really tight there's like two tracks the hungaro ring and then whatever the dutch track is and i couldn't figure them out like it was weird like i kept crashing um i did the track acclimatization and did fine like no issues and then i couldn't do it anymore like I, it was weird i don't know it's like i knew mm. what to do but like the car wouldn't turn um yeah. on either place like it was on both places the car wouldn't turn it wouldn't go like it's only happened at those two tracks it's really weird yeah the first one like i still i still i qualified like second but i like i literally couldn't like i couldn't put together more than a lap like it would i would just i got mad and i just like i literally crashed on purpose and came in last <laughs> and then, <laughs> you're just done with it I was like, oh, fuck it, we'll go to the next track. And then oh yeah, this one, I qualified like 13th. Like, it was so bad, I couldn't even put a lap together. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't, it didn't work. Nothing worked. I changed the setup. I tried everything. Setups that are customized. I tried the pre-built ones. Nothing worked. Same thing happened. Um, I made it like six laps, and I was fighting it the whole time. It was almost like the, the tires didn't have any grip. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. Same thing, like, I got a really good start, actually. I got into second from the start, like, beat, like I got a good launch past everybody in the first turn. It was literally, like, I don't know, it was weird. I couldn't drive the thing, it was like I was on ice. I spun off and hit the wall, and the tire came off, and I was like, cool, I'll just take a loss. So, <laughs> don't care. So then I went to the other, the, the two of the other tracks I went to, like Monza and Spa, I'm really, really good at. So, mm-hmm. it really wasn't a challenge. And then... um so yeah, I got Interlagos, which I'm really good at. Uh, and then Las Vegas is the last race, so I'll be oh, interested yeah. to see how that one is. Um, but yeah, definitely. I'm gonna fire my my number two driver and hopefully hire somebody good. We'll see. Can I hire Sergeant, the best driver in the world? I don't know. My, he's only three million. I'm like, I'm gonna have ten million left over because I think if if you finish sixth or higher in the constructor, my sponsor gives me ten million. Oh, nice. So that, that's that I'll I'll do that easily. I think I'm in like second or third. So I'm uh, there's like there's no way I can finish in sixth. I could like not score points and not and so I'll get the ten million. So that really I could pretty much approach anybody on the grid except for like Hamilton mm-hmm. and Verstappen. So hmm. we'll see. I might go crazy and try to sign somebody who's like a ninety and see what happens. It's a good idea. Oh yeah, I forgot they have ratings. I forgot about that. Hmm. It's interesting. Um. Yeah, I can't remember. Did we do a co-op race like over the weekend? I really don't remember. Probably. Yeah, I feel like we maybe did one before we we killed one night. But uh, we also definitely played Battlefield 2042. I played some solo this week as well because uh, actually it was on Sunday. Um, I think you were at work or whatever and or had to go to work the next day. So on Sunday, I think I played by myself because I wanted to take advantage of the double XP and I was like really close to getting the new assault rifle and pistol in the in the new season in the battle pass so i unlocked the g36c and the essentially the desert eagle and both are sick the g36c i think is the best assault rifle in the game right now can't wait for him to fuck that up but it's it's really good um starts out with a small magazine 20 20 rounds but you get a you 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 get an extended one as the first kind of like attachment or one of the first attachments. So it doesn't take too long. Really enjoying that. Had had some, you know, not so good games, but I had a couple games where I was pretty good. One game I was 17th on the leaderboard and I had one of those, uh, had one of those, you know, try hard guys who was like, you guys suck. This whole team sucks. You need to be capping this. You need to be taking D or whatever. Yada, yada. And I was just like, buddy, shut the fuck up. Like in the in the text chat, and he was like, "You're you're 17." I said, "And you're seven. 
I said, get, I said, quit out then. I said, if you hate this game this much, like you had, you're, you're, you're dying over there because we're not capturing every point. Then just quit, just quit the game, <laughs> un- uninstall it, go play something else. Like, I'm just sick of those. That's the, that's the only negative about Battlefield. And I guess it's just games in general, like the fucking tryhards, dude, they're just, oh, it's like, it's a game. Like, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some. Guaranteed that DICE has this motherfucker tuned to where, the win ratio is 50%. Like it's literally a coin always. flip. It's, it's a always coin 50%. it's a coin flip. Yeah, it's a coin flip. You're like look at your win loss ratio. I guarantee you it's somewhere within you know 5 percentage points of 50%. I would put money on it. And that's the Every way they designed the game. I've ever played is it like 50 or 55? Yeah, and that's the way they designed the games. Like if you were getting your shit pushed in all the time, you wouldn't have any fun. But if you were winning every game conversely, you also wouldn't be having any fun believe it or not is and i understand why they do it anyway so i'll play battlefield uh there's a new seasonal event that starts on tuesday that i'm looking i'm looking forward to i want to check that out together i want to check it out with you and uh, get some of those get some of those like you, you just changed the romance level i did i changed the romance options in the japanese ronin game ronin my balls across her face <laughs> ronin ronin my balls straight into lichthand and uh yeah i played some i'm also simultaneously working through my backlog a little bit i have like a little bit of time here like a slow period i guess because i'm reviewing a game that i'm like i've hit a wall with at the moment that i can't do anything else with until it launches so Mm -hmm. i've been trying to go through the backlog a little bit went back to Sackboy, a big adventure some and that's a really good game. I, I think I've said it on the show before, but I'm just like kind of out of the mood for it at the moment. So moved on from that and moved to the next game, which was Hogwarts Legacy. And that game's really good. And I really like like the world of it. The combat's cool. The castle of Hogwarts is really like a cool, like a really cool designed place. Like a lot of moving parts and like things going on in the background, whatever. But like I just don't, I'm not like connected to the, to the story. I don't even know what the fuck's going on in the story, really. And and I I it's just hard for me to like be invested in it mm-hmm. after putting it down because I also haven't seen all the movies or read the books. And not that this has anything to do with that, but I know I'm missing some things. And I almost feel too that the world itself, the open world, is almost like I actually saw a review that put it pretty well. They said that it feels like a theme park feels like you're walking around and interacting with all these things, but like the world's not actually alive, if that makes sense. And well, so it's a video I, game. Yeah, it is a video game, but there are games that do it really well and it's, it's, it's struggling to keep me engaged. So mm-hmm. I moved on from that. And just before we started recording, I started Gotham Knights. So I'm going to give that a try. That's been on my list as well. I'm going to check that out and see if that's any good. I know I got pretty average or mediocre reviews, so but I'll make my own opinion. By God, anyway, that's uh, all that I've been playing. It's all that Travis has been playing, and that's it for the show. So we'll get out of here. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to get a new show delivered to you every Monday on your podcast feed or the YouTube. Also, if you can leave us a like, a comment, a rating, a review, thumbs up, all that good stuff, very helpful. Helps us uh, be risen again up the algorithms on podcast apps so thank you very much if you could do that also if you could share us with a friend or a loved one who you think might enjoy the show we would appreciate you greatly if you could do that as well and uh, don't forget to find us on social media twitter at the dual sense pod uh facebook instagram threads now and our website is the dual sense podcast dot wordpress dot com please find us hit us up chat playstation with us we would love to hear from you So we'll get out of here now. Thank you for listening as always. Have a great week and we'll talk at you next time. Bye-bye.